The big debate on Wall Street these days is whether or not we're in the eighth inning of a nine inning game or the eighth inning of an extended inning game as it relates to the bull market and U.S. equities. And notwithstanding the merits of such a debate, I think it really comes down to uh, two things. Interest rates remain low and accommodative. Corporate and economic growth remains quite strong. And from a sentiment perspective, the street right now is very risk tolerant. I think all that bodes very well as we head into the second half of this year. But looking back where we were so far this year, uh, not too long ago at the previous OIS, I was, we were coming out of the first quarter and I remarked about how volatile it was. The good news is the second quarter saw a return back to sort of normalized performance uh, and volatility. Uh, regardless of market cap, stocks were up somewhere in the mid single digits so far year to date. Looking into the second half of this year, clearly the midterm elections are gonna potentially cause some near term volatility, but again, likely not strong enough or potent enough to offset some of the positive trends that have been really driving the market for the past couple of years. As it relates specifically to our corner of the world, uh, starting first with the private funding environment uh, for companies both in biotech and medtech, as you can tell from the bars there, these are unprecedented uh, strong levels. Uh, funding in both biotech and medtech so far year to date is almost matching that for all of 2017. And why is that? You really can't have a healthy private funding environment without the existence of exit opportunities. And just looking at this chart here on the left, you can see that both M&A and IPO exit opportunities as it relates to biotech are quite strong, already on track halfway through this year to meet all of last year's uh, totals. Uh, ophthalmology comfortably within the top five, not surprised to see it behind oncology, but nonetheless well represented in the top five. Looking specifically at biopharma IPOs, the blue line there that is the most up and down and wiggly line of all is a cumulative rolling average of, of the performance of the biotech IPOs or biopharma IPOs. And after a good start, we did see a setback caused by some uh, development related issues, but nonetheless, since then has regained its footing and on average up 15% so far this year. That's an okay number, um, better than 14, but not as good as 20 where we like to see it. 20 usually signifies sort of the resilience of an IPO, mar uh, of an IPO market, hoping that uh, with the IPOs that priced in the last week and what we see coming in the pipeline, we'll see that number move closer to 20%. Similarly, looking at med tech, same type of trends, uh, very, very pronounced M&A and IPO activity, unlike Biotech, where you see more IPOs than m and it's always been and continues to be reversed for med tech, and you can see ophthalmology very well represented uh, in the top five categories. In terms of the performance specifically of both biotech and med tech ophthalm ophthalmology uh, companies, the black line on top is medical device. Uh, the two shaded lines in the middle are the markets, and the, and the bottom brighter line is biotech. Um, I don't like to sort of overanalyze why something is up or down any point in time. I will just generally say that medtech has been outperforming biotech for some time now in ophthalmology. I think mostly driven by the fact that the milestones driving this performance have tended to be from events that are more later stage in nature, so phase three pivotal type trials, or for that matter, product or revenue sales, which tend to have more of an impact on market cap and therefore performance. And biotech tends to be a little bit earlier stage and the risk profiles are slightly different. Other than that, I wouldn't read too much into it. It's still a pretty healthy performance. Looking back since 2016, uh, the top lines indicate M&A events, the bottom IPOs. Historically, we've seen a lot more M&A than IPO, although this year is a little bit different. Uh, IPO trends, broadly speaking, have been quite strong, and we've seen that particularly also in ophthalmology. There's been uh, three IPOs so far this year and only two M&A events. Um, I will point out since 2017, there were six ophthalmology IPOs, and sadly, all but two of them um, are down. Um, we'd like to see that obviously reverse itself if we're gonna maintain the viability of that product. But when you sort of step back and look at that same sort of dynamic over a broader lens and look back to 2015, you can still see that ophthalmology IPOs, both med tech and, and, and biotech perform uh, well enough, um, and in both cases, ophthalmology is second only to oncology in the case of biotech, 
and in the case of MedTech, second to cardiovascular. But still very, very good performance and will continue to drive interest in ophthalmology and specifically new issuances. Outlook. Uh, I always show this chart and I really like it because it shows why investors are going to continue to be interested. If you look at all the market cap tied to ophthalmology companies, it's almost 500 billion. Of that 500 billion, roughly nearly 60% is going to be exposed to some meaningful, likely stock moving event in the next year. Um, and you can see it's weighted towards the top of the page and those events tend to have more of an impact on stock price performance. So this is a nice way of showing why investors that we talk to on a day-to-day -day basis continue to care and care about what we're all doing in this room. Key trends that are sort of unifying a lot of these, a lot of the, uh, the events on the previous page um, continues to be addressing unmet medical needs, particularly in the areas of AMD, DME, retina, dry eye, as well as deploying new innovation and new technologies to, to lock into those markets. Um, I can go on for another 20 minutes, but unfortunately they only gave me six minutes Last time I got 10, I don't know if that means, I'm, I don't know if I'm doing better or worse, but uh, anyway, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be here.